Hello YouTube, my name is Trey. Welcome to Work It Out Change. Today we're gonna to be talking about some glazed donuts. Y'all remember an individual I had talked about that they had called him sir? They said a ma'am, if y'all remember that video. So we're gonna go more into details uh, about that individual, but they're talking about something completely different. Before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to, if you don't, cool. And if you wanna help the channel, donate down here and you can help uh, put that in my cash app and we can keep the production going and keeping this thing nice and tidy. Appreciate you guys. All right, so. Let's hop right on into this first, this individual. So this is this is individual. Um, I've, I've obviously, like I said, I normally try to watch the videos. I finally found out who it was. Last time, I didn't know who it was. I tried searching for them the best I could, couldn't find them, but now I know who they are. So here we go. Everyone's been really nice and sweet. I'm pretty nervous right now. I didn't think I would be this nervous having someone put you under and just like take you out. It's a loss of control that I'm not really used to. Fun fact, the last time that I was under anesthesia, general anesthesia, was for my second circumcision when I was six months old because the guy who did it the first time botched it. I'll update you soon. Next time you see me, I will have no cake pops. I lived and I'm cake pop free. I'm feeling a little loopy right now. That's true. That's true. I remember getting wheeled into the OR and they were very nice. And then I woke up. I had a little bit of discomfort down there, like a little bit of soreness. I haven't seen it yet, but yeah, this is very good. It was good, it was success, great. It was very nice. I am reporting to you live from- Okay, so we're gonna go off of that whole cake pops theme. And so how did this lead to the whole glazed donuts? Well, let me show you. DJ, put, the, put it on me right quick. Let me show you how that cake pop leads to what we're going to have right now. Here we are. Let me make sure. When I got my cake pops removed, I specifically asked my surgeon to leave the bag intact. That's because down the line, if I wanted to use my cake pop stick and turn it into a donut, the bag can come in handy. There are a couple methods that use the bag itself, but the one that I'm referring to is called the cake pop stick inversion method. What they do is they take the cake pop stick and they turn it inside out, essentially turning the inside of the cake pop stick into the lining of the donut. Once the lining is in place, they can take the bag and use pieces of it to create the exterior of the donut. The inversion method is one of the most common ways that you see trans women get their donut. There are a lot of doctors who are very familiar with this method and very good at it, and you hear about a lot of success stories. I probably wouldn't do this method if I were gonna get a donut, although I'm not sure I want one in the first place. One of the drawbacks of this method is that your donut cannot self-glaze. You are gonna have to manually glaze your donut every time you want to serve it. I'll cover some of the self-glazing donut options in a future video. When I got my cake pop- So I bet you're wondering to yourself, what is this self-glaze that you talk about? Cake pop inversion method. It's called the, uh, it's, uh, now I've been trying to work on this. I'm not a doctor, so I don't know all these words as well, but it's called the Patronelle inversion. We're going to, we're going to go over that here in a second. I want to refute some of the things that um, this individual said about the inversion method. I want to tell you right now, the surgery that this individual is talking about, it is extensive. It is not as simple as taking your, uh, your, it's not as easy as taking your genitals and just inverting them in. The surgery has to do with taking your genitals, right? Taking out the testicles, like he said, and you take, so you take your shaft. What do I have for that? Just say you, you take your shaft, right? You completely take everything out of it. And then all you have is the skin. So there's no meat, nothing inside your, your shaft like it used to be. They take that shaft, invert it inside. Take, and we're, we're, I, want, I want to go over this first before we go further into that. Okay. So let's talk about the self-glaze methods. Now that my cake pops have been removed, the question is, do I want to turn the stick into a donut? Last time we talked about the inversion method, which takes the cake pop stick and flips it inside out to create the lining of the donut. Unfortunately, a donut made this way cannot self-glaze, but there is a method that can. It's called the pull-through method. In this method, the cake pop stick isn't used. Instead, they take 
the tissue from your abdomen, I will use this bag to represent that, and they pull it down to create the lining for the donut. So instead of going from the outside in, you're going from the inside down. And because of the nature of your tummy lining, this donut can now self-glaze. This method is newer and more complex than the inversion method, so there's not as many doctors out there that know how to perform it. Doctors tend to pick one method and make it their specialty, so new methods like the tummy lining method did take a while to catch on. That being said, the women who have gotten their donuts via the pull-through method have reported a lot of positive results. If I were to get my donut, this probably would be my first choice, but honestly, I'm still not sure. So, he talks about self-glazing. So we're gonna go ahead and get right into some videos. So this individual can explain it. This is Dr. Heidi Wittenberg, who does these surgeries in San Francisco. Uh, I've already watched the entire video and I watched a whole nother video, but I want y'all to see, okay? I want her to explain it at the end. She's gonna go into conclusion, explain to you about what he keeps saying about self-glazing, because what it sounds like is that it's gonna be lubricating, right? It's gonna be your, your, your new uh, vagina, you could say, is going to be lubricating itself and uh, not necessarily so let's look into see what dr heidi wittenberg had to say no um it's hard to test that they are external and not internalized where we expect a decrease in touch minora do they have extra sensation um we don't know um it's hard to test that they are external and not internalized where we expect a decrease in touch sensation so that we need to follow and then lastly um for the full length of vaginal lining i guess one of the benefits is that um, you are not going to get residual hair follicle growth in that lining uh, to be concerned about. And what we're also seeing is while our patients still need to dilate and to um, lubricate with dilation and a vaginal receptive play, is just that small amount of watery yellowy um, discharge that the vagina, the peritoneal lining creates. We're finding our patients are falling off the douching curve and needing to douche. So even though the pH is the same, 7.0 as a skin grafting vaginas is just that a little amount of fluid I think creates a little self-cleaning of an effect, a self-cleaning um, effect so that bacterial overgrowth uh, tends to be flushed out. So uh, we're finding by following our patients that they're not uh, needing to douche as much. So. Uh, I hope that answers a lot of questions and myths uh, and frequently asked concerns out there. Uh, we will give you updates as we get further updates. Oh, you can kind of hear her explain towards the end. So the self-glazing that this individual was talking about isn't like what you think is in a regular vagina, right? Um, normal vagina things. Talking about that there's an actual self-lubrication that's going on. The way it is explained here is that there is a watery substance. It's kind of yellow. Um, in fact, um, you have to wear, and she explains it in another video, but oh, in this video actually, but when you get this surgery, you have to wear a pad because of that discharge, right? So when you're living life, because there's always that little bit of watery discharge that's coming out, uh, kind of that yellowy thing, it's kind of like your urine, what she explains, you have to wear a pad almost all the time. And you still have to dilate. If y'all don't know what that means, I'll explain. You still have to dilate. So when you get one of these vaginoplasties, you have to dilate to take something that looks somewhat similar to a sex toy. But and you put it inside and you do that for maybe 30 minutes and you use water lubricant and stuff like that. You have to do that most of the time for the rest of your life, right? For the rest of your life. Same thing you have to do here. The only difference between what the individual is saying that there is self-glazing and there isn't self-glazing is that the other one has that watery cleaning method, as she says. It just kind of cleans itself instead of you having to do so much. It's not saying that you're going to be having to, it's not self-glazing like you would for somebody who's getting ready for intercourse or it's not going to be self-glazing, like lubricating like a normal vagina. It's just watery. It's not the same. It's not the same thickness. It's not the same lubricant. So it's not self-glazing itself. It's just a watery substance that's coming out because of what you have done to your intestines, right? Um, so... I just want to get that out of the way that it, that there, what he was trying to make it sound like is that when you get this new surgery that you're going to be able to be, it's going to be almost just like a regular vagina. No, it, the watery substance is completely different. It's more of a self-cleaning than a lubricant. Okay, now I want to talk about the surgery right quick. And if you want to watch the surgery, well, obviously you can't watch it here. 
uh, because YouTube is not going to say let me say it's educational. So you can check it out here. You can go to Dr. Dell Coral Plastic Surgery, Robotic, uh, Patronel, Pull Through, uh, Vaginoplasty, or you can call it the Inversion Method. Okay. So I watched that whole video. Obviously, it is extensive, guys. It is extensive. And this individual on this TikTok, I will admit this one thing about them. Let me get their face back up. Of course, right? When I want to get their face back up, I can't. Uh, this, this individual, let's go back. This individual, you know, you ain't got to go harass them or nothing like that. But this individual, I admit that can, they can talk well. They're great at talking. Okay, Lily, or whatever the name is, they can talk well. May sound the most informative, perfect, you and most informative person you've ever seen, right? But here's my problem, okay? It doesn't matter. I want to say this. This person thinks they're a woman. Oh, I'm going to go ahead and say that. Says they're a woman. They date women. Because, once again, this is another individual who's a man who is identifying as a female and wants to date women, but not any woman. They want to date a woman who happens to also be lesbian. So they want a woman who would date a woman, even though they themselves are not a woman, Right? They, they don't want to take the path of just dating a woman who would be willing to date uh, a man because he still has his shaft, like we said. But nope, it's got to be it's got to be a woman who's into men. It's got to be a woman who's into women with penises. I mean, that's just what it comes down to. Right. So one, once again, can't get on that. The videos they make pretty good. Uh, but outside of that, I mean, obviously outside of that, they make it sound like having this surgery is as simple as up oh, take your take your shaft and turn it inside out no when you watch the surgery if you do end up watching it uh it's not for the faint at heart but it is uh, it is crazy so they end up taking your shaft right cleaning all the meat out inverting it inside making it to like this little little hole so it's like it's like if you uh i don't even know how to explain it but nonetheless you take your whole flap and then they flip it inside out creating like a hole like this right a hole right that you could put stuff in right but then they take your intestines right and they take the inside of your your intestines down here and they start doing a bunch of incisions they take all of that put it outside of that flap and then that's where that's where you would be inserting a sex toy or somebody an individual will be inserting their genitals right and it's just going into this flap going inside to this flap inside these intestinal walls that are now sewn to the outside you got to watch the video guys it looks like the most unnecessary surgery ever. And you know, one of the problems this lady talks about again, if you go watch a video, you can go watch it. One of the issues that also comes up, if you get an infection down there, because there's infections that come with vaginal plasties, makes them much, they make it want to sound like it's not that common. It happens. Okay. If you get an infection down there, especially when you do this method, you're also going to get an infection in your abdominals. So it's not going to just be there. You're going to get an infection down there and you're going to get an infection in your abdominals because they're interconnected now. And you have a greater chance of getting an infection because of how your intestines have been, not intestines, but how your abdominal walls and your intestine lining has been split up. So it is a, it is not a method that I would ever suggest anybody ever go through. They always make it seem like these surgeries are just so simple. They're so easy. It's just as simple as one, two, three. No, when you look at the surgery, the things that these people are doing to themselves, all to have a self glazing donut, all to just be able to um, have to be able to have sex and see. They all say it has nothing to do with the genitals. It's all in your mind, but they do everything in the world to make them the opposite sex. They have all these surgeries. Now they're trying to be able to lubricate just like women. They're trying to replicate it all, and you can't. The lubrication we just talked about is nothing like lubricant. It's it's dang near urine. It's just a watery urine substance. That's all it is. It's nice and it's yellow. It's not the same. And that's what I don't understand. But they say that we're crazy because we're like, wow, we're, we're suggesting that you don't get this surgery. We're suggesting you don't go through this. And the way that it's being explained with these cake pops, sorry, I'm getting into it. Those cake pops and those uh, sticks, you can see the people in the comments if you're reading. These people are making it sound like, these people are like, man, that's so informative. It's, it's so, No, you cannot explain the irreversible effects of this. OK, you cannot explain that with cake pops and donuts. You can't revert the cake pop. You can't take the cake stick back out. There is no going back from the donut. It's over from that point forward. And even if you even if you get back to 
your mind. You say, you know what? I didn't mean to do that. I, I want. I actually want to be a man. I want all my body parts back. It's done. It's done. It is not normal to ha want to have one of these surgeries. When you look at the surgery itself, it looks dangerous because it's so unnecessary. You're doing something that's not necessary, even with gender dysphoria. Think about it. It takes a truth. If you're really struggling with gentle dysphoria, I mean gender dysphoria, it's still not right because it would take somebody mentally ill to do that to themselves, to literally take off their genitals, to make a genital that is nothing can only resemble, okay, resemble what a normal vagina would be like. They're doing everything they can to get to this point. And then they tell us they're not unhinged. They tell us that it's all normal. We're the ones who have a problem. We're the ones who need to let it go. No, you need to go through therapy and let it go. That's true care. That's true love. You should not ever be telling a child, an adult, either one to have this kind of surgery and it's going to change their life because when you look deeply into it it's not true it's just not so this individual is putting out videos making you think that having your testicles removed and just having a simple surgery is it's not simple it's going to change your life forever at some point when are we going to start caring for the people again I do. I definitely think it shouldn't be done on kids, and I can't stop adults from doing what they want to do. But we need to at least talk about it. And this individual did not do that. This individual talked about cake pops and donuts. I haven't seen any videos. I ain't seen no lives that goes, "Hey guys, I wouldn't even recommend this." I mean, this is this is absolute. I would never recommend this. They don't do that. They say you should do it. They, you do this irreversible thing. Now you can have a self-glazing donut. They make it seem so trivial. It's not even close to that. It's not close to that at all. You're taking... Listen. I've seen this individual's TikTok. I went back on the TikTok. I've seen them be on estrogen. I've seen it all the way they explain the matrix. This individual is so into this. They, they, I'm going to show you all this. Before we go, we, let me show you all this. So, did you know that The Matrix is actually all about realizing you're trans? The directors of the movie are both trans women, but at the time of making The Matrix, they were both still figuring that out. While they didn't actively try to make a movie about realizing they were trans, they later confirmed that that's what it ended up being. And if you think about it, it makes sense. Neo is trapped in a world that calls him Mr. Anderson a name that he hates. As the movie goes on, Neo realizes that Mr. Anderson and the identity that comes with that name aren't really him at all. And in fact, he's someone else entirely. There's a truer version of himself that is yet to wake up. Eventually, he's given a choice between the red pill and the blue pill. He chooses the red pill, which begins his transition out of the Matrix. And wouldn't you know that at the time the Matrix came out, estrogen pills were red. You may also remember the bad guy agents from the movie, or if you will, the transphobes. They will do anything to stop people from transitioning, sometimes even resorting to acts of violence. Sound familiar? And I'm just scratching the no. surface here. If you rewatch this movie, I guarantee you will find so much more. So for you guys who don't know the backstory of The Matrix, The Matrix was actually made from a woman who wrote the book, The Matrix. Right, the Matrix was originally about Jesus Did Christ. You know that Believe the that or not, is actually the original story is about Jesus Christ. Now, to say that these uh, individual directors, who I've already spoken about, these individual directors that they did not make the movie to become trans, they were not representing it to be trans because the individuals, the guy who made the movie, he ended up becoming trans. He even had an interview and said that the reason he started to even transition to being trans is because he was so into transsexual porn. He was watching pornography and he was watching it so much that eventually he switched, he went into what we call, you know, sissy porn or trans porn. And that's what got him to go to that point. That didn't happen till after the Matrix had been out for a while. They, so they did not make it with the intent to be, excuse me, to be a trans movie. That's not true. That's not true. So that's a false narrative. OK, that the movie was made to show transition. Because if you even watch the movie, it's not really about Neo. Let, let, let's just break it down just quickly. 
the movie isn't really even about Neo. People, when you really want to look down into the Matrix, it's really about him becoming the one. They said he was the chosen one, but he wasn't really. Even the woman in the movie, the Oracle kind of, tells him he's not the one because he's not. You know who is the, who is the one? The agent. The agent that's trying to break free. Y'all didn't know that, huh? But nonetheless, because you got to really watch the movie instead of... Anyway, my point being is they take anything and everything. Just because the directors are trans, the movie wasn't originally even about that. They took an idea from somebody else who really originally made the Matrix to be Jesus and the Terminator to be Jesus. The Terminator to be the second coming of Jesus. <laughs> it's too deep. But why would you take the Matrix and try to make it... In, when, I, when I read the comments... Everybody was saying, oh, yeah, that's, I knew that's why I love The Matrix. No, you didn't. That is not why you like the movie. It was a decent movie. The trilogy is okay. Yeah, you know? But see, these individuals, they take anything and everything to make you want to transition, right? I know I'm being humorous right now, but I, do, I am trying to be serious as well. It's sickening. And this individual is teaching people how easy it is to transition when it's not. It's life-changing. I don't have not heard this individual go over the mental health or anything that really comes with gender dysphoria. They talk about it as if it makes them the happiest person on earth and it just flat out won't. It just won't. Y'all go check out that surgery for real. I'll, I'll show it to you one more time. Go check it out. This is what it's called. And you tell me if this looks normal to you. This is what the surgery this individual is talking about with the inversion glazed donut, self glazing donut. Go watch it. You can even see a little picture of kind of what it looks like down here. It is not, it is not simple. Stop trying, to, stop trying to lie to people and say that this is going to improve their life and it's going to make them the greatest thing on earth. Because this individual, you heard them say. And I heard so many success stories and the people are loving it. No. No. 